I want to tell you about a spectacular dining experience. It's Ports of Call Waterfront Dining, award-winning service and cuisine with a view of the dynamic L.A. Harbor from every seat. Enjoy daily sunset specials as well as the South Bay's best champagne brunch. The outdoor harborside patio is a perfect setting for happy hour every weekday from 3 to 8. Ports of Call Waterfront Dining. For reservations and directions, visit portsacalldining.com or call 310-833-3553. I should say welcome. And I am Thrash Pie, your favorite guy. This is the alternative coverage to the first of probably a many Republican debates. Tomorrow, That's Chris Wallace. The candidates standing together. He's, he's we'll working for us there at the convention. <laughs> He'll report yeah. in later. Thanks, Chris. Good work. Good work, pal. Don't stage the news. <laughs> yeah, so there they are. It, Where's I'm the Donald? Ah, oh, there he is. Look for, look for the hair. You can find him. Because the rest of them you couldn't pick out of a friggin' police lineup. You really couldn't. Except for Jeb. He's, he looks like he belongs at Comic-Con. <laughs> I, I, honest to God, bless his heart, he just doesn't have it. I don't get it. It is 9 p.m. on the East Coast, and the moment of truth has arrived. Welcome to the first debate night of the 2016 presidential campaign, live from Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. Mr. Trump. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. Nope. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, <laughs> dogs, <laughs> slobs, and disgusting animals. Oh, God. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh. Oh. Your Twitter account... <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. It was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Oh. <laughs> Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. I've been ch <laughs> It's a winner. I've been challenged by so many people and I don't frankly have time for total political correctness. And to be honest with you, this country doesn't have time either. This country is in big trouble. We don't win anymore. We lose to China, we lose to Mexico, both in trade and at the border. We lose to everybody. And frankly, what I say, and oftentimes it's fun, it's kidding, we have a good time. What I say <laughs> is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. But you know what? <laughs> we. There's the Trump we love. We need strength, we need energy, we need quickness, and we need brain in this country to turn it around. That I can tell you right now. You're fired. Governor Christie, you've said that Senator Paul's opposition to the NSA's collection of phone records has made the United States weaker and more vulnerable, even going so far as to say that he should be called before Congress to answer for it if we should be hit by another terrorist attack. Do you really believe you can assign blame to Senator Paul just for opposing the bulk collection of people's phone records in the event of a terrorist attack? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because I'm the only person on this stage who's actually filed applications under the Patriot Act, who have gone before the, federal, uh, the, the Foreign Intelligence Service Court, who has prosecuted and investigated and jailed terrorists in this country after September 11th. I was appointed U.S. Attorney by President Bush on September 10th, 2001, and the world changed enormously the next day, and it happened in my state. This is not theoretical to me. I went to the funerals. We lost friends of ours in the Trade Center that day. My own wife was two blocks from the Trade Center that day at her office, having gone through it that morning. When you actually have to be responsible, 
for doing this. You can do it, and we did it for seven years in my office, respecting civil liberties and protecting the homeland. And I will make no apologies ever for protecting the lives and the safety of the American people. We have to give more tools to our folks to be able to do that, not fewer, and then trust those people and oversee them to do it the right way. As president, that is exactly what I'll do. Megan, may I respond? See, that's... Um, Go ahead, sir. It's like he knew that question was coming. Right. I want to collect more uh -oh. records from terrorists, but less records from innocent Americans. The Fourth Amendment was what we fought the revolution over. John Adams said it was the spark that led to our war for independence. And I'm proud of standing for the Bill of Rights, and I will continue to stand for the Bill of Rights. And, and Megan, Megan, that's a, that, you know, that's a completely ridiculous answer. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from other people. How are you supposed to know, Megan? Use the Fourth what are you Amendment. To, how are you supposed Use to? Use the Fourth no, Amendment. No, I'll tell you how you do oh, it. Let me tell here you we go. You judge to sign when the you, uh, you know, the Senator. Go ahead, wait, Governor Christie, make your point. Listen, Senator, you know, when you're sitting in a subcommittee just blowing hot air about this, oh. you can say things like that. Oh. When you're responsible oh. for protecting the lives of the American people, then what you need to do is Here's to make sure is to make sure that Here's you use the, problem, the system governor. the way it's supposed to Here's work. the problem, yes, Governor. You fundamentally un misunderstand the Bill of Rights. Every time you did a case, you got a warrant from a judge. I'm talking there about searches without warrants, is no indiscriminately of all Americans' records, and that's what I fought to end. I don't trust President Obama with our records. Yeah. I know oh. you gave him a big hug, and if you want to give Ooh, him a big hug. here we go. Yeah, baby. Yeah, now we're talking about Now we're seeing a bloody nose. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and you know, That's what we paid for. You know, Senator yeah. Paul? You threw a donut at him. Senator Paul, you know, the hugs that I remember are the hugs that I gave to the families who lost their people on September 11th. Huh? Those are the hugs I remember. And those had nothing to do. Now, and see, look what Trump do has done to these guys. Look what Trump has done. Doing <laughs> by cutting speeches on the floor of the Senate, then putting them on the Internet within a half an hour to raise money for your campaign, right. oh. and while still putting our country at risk. All right, oh, we're going to cut it out there. Ding, 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 ding. We want to get to. They wisely let that, that go because that's, no, that's, uh, that's, that's what's Alex happening. Yeah, that's what we and want. He has the following. <laughs> As president, would you bring back waterboarding? Well, thank you, Megan. I wasn't sure I was going to get to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, ben. Don't worry. That was pretty good. Good for him. Now, the Twitter feed was blowing up about him not being asked questions. <laughs> right. Well, good. They um, should have been. Mr. Trump, <laughs> Obamacare is one of the things you call a disaster. Complete disaster. <laughs> You're saying it needs to be repealed and replaced. Correct. Now, 15 years ago, you called yourself a liberal on health care. You were for a single-payer system, a Canadian-style mm. system. Here we go. Why were you for that then, and why aren't you for it now? Uh, first of all, I'd like to just go back to one. In July of 2004, uh -oh. I came out strongly against the war with Iraq Oop. because it was going to destabilize the Middle East and I'm the only one on the stage that knew that and had the vision to say it and that's exactly what happened. The but Middle East Obamacare. became totally to destabilized. So I just want to say, as far as single payer, it works in Canada, it works incredibly well in Scotland, it could have worked in a different age, which is the age you're talking about here. What I'd like to see is a private system without the artificial lines around every state. I have a big company with thousands and thousands of employees, and if I'm negotiating in New York or in New Jersey or in California, I have like one bidder. Nobody can bid. You know why? Because the insurance companies are making a fortune because they have control of the politicians. Of course, with the exception of the politicians of the stage. Uh. But they have total control of the politicians. They're making a fortune. Get rid of the artificial lines and you will have yourself great plans. And then we have to take care of the people that can't take care of themselves. And I will do that through a different system. Hey, Brett, Mr. Trump, Brett, hold on I one second. A, I got a news flash. I know. Hold on. Sir. Uh oh, here news we go. Flash. The Republican Party's been fighting no. against and a this has been Rand Paul's hard on the whole night. He's See, jumping in. You're on the wrong side of this if you're still arguing for a single party. I'm not. System. I'm not. I don't think you heard me. You're having a hard time tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Boy Mr. Trump, it's there not go. just your past support for single-payer health care. You've also supported a host of other liberal policies. You've also donated to several de Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton included, Nancy Pelosi. You explained away those donations, saying you did that to get business-related favors. And you said recently, quote, 
when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. <laughs> you better believe it. So what specifically did they there do? There we go. If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, <laughs> a lot of money. Not me. Not me. <laughs> But you're welcome to give me a check, Donald, if you like. Many of them. Actually, to be clear, That's he right. supported not, Charlie Crist. Not Mike. Hey, Charlie, but I, hey, I have... Donald, if you end I have campaign, kid. I hope you will give to me. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good to me, Governor. I will tell you that our system is broken. I give to many people. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. So what and that's get? a broken system. So what did yeah. you get from Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi? Well, I'll tell you what. With Hillary Clinton, I said, be at my wedding, and she came to my wedding. You know why? <laughs> she had no choice because I gave. Now, each candidate... We'll make a closing statement. Huh? We'll all have 30 seconds to make a closing statement for this debate. We'll start. Trump can't close Ohio in Governor 30 seconds. John Casey. <laughs> what? Oh. You know, tonight we hear about what people want to do. I want to tell you what I've done. I was a member of the Armed Services Committee for 18 years. I spent uh, a big chunk of my life studying uh, national security issues and our role in the world. Number two. I was the chairman of the House Budget Committee and one of the chief architects the last time we balanced the budget, and it was the first time we'd done it since man walked on the moon. We had a $5 trillion surplus and we cut taxes. I spent 10 years in the private sector actually learning how business works. This is starting to sound like a high school Ohio election, you know. Yeah. I'm going to put Coke gum machines in the, you know, in the gyms. Jobs and balanced budgets I'm going to put a Coke machine on every cuts, floor. And the you state know. is unified and people have hope again in Ohio. I was president of the Glee Club. I was, you know. Great. Well. Thank you, Megan. Listen, I was born into a middle-class family in New Jersey. Here we go. My dad came home from serving in the Army after having lost his father, worked in the Briars ice cream plant in Newark, New Jersey, was the hey. first person to graduate <laughs> from college, put himself through college at night. My mom was a secretary. I was appointed United States I guess States this stuff works. They 10th, all do it every time, and, spent the next seven and it years never ends. You know, there's never, you know, I was a juvenile delinquent. I was, uh, you know, I went to juvie for ripping, uh, really stealing hubcaps, and, uh, right. and yeah, like I was banging New my cousin's sister, and, uh, you know, taxes, I got the, they sent the, it doesn't happen. I used to do pornography, but, you know, I've changed. And and now, you know, I'm governor of New Jersey, and everybody loves me. God almighty. Senator Paul, closing statement. I'm a different kind of Republican. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've introduced a five-year balanced budget. I've introduced the largest tax cut in our history. I stood for ten and a half hours on the Senate floor to defend your, light, your right to be left alone. But I've also gone to Chicago, I've gone to Detroit, I've been to Ferguson, I've been to Baltimore because I want our party to be bigger, better, and bolder, and I'm the only one that leads Hillary Clinton I'm the only in one. five states that were Drink won up. by I'm, President I'm Obama. I'm empty, too. I'm yeah. a different kind of Republican. <laughs> he is so that, that's for Rubio. sure. Thank you. You know, both of my parents were born into poor families on the island of Cuba. Yeah. Yep. Of they came to America because it was the only place where people like them could have a chance. Here in this country, they never made it big, but the very purpose of their life was to give us the chance My to do all the things they never could. My mom was a crack whore. My father was a bartender. Oh, God. Just once, the right? From the oh, just once. Just one time tonight, you want to hear a real me, story. that's the essence of the American dream. Yeah. It's what makes our nation different. And I'm running for president because I want that to still be My possible. My mom set her hair on fire, do ran down the street naked. I run for president but because she recovered. I believe that we can't just save the American She put me through dream. high school. We can school. expand it to reach more people. Then I put my hair on fire and ran down the street naked. And that's why I'm asking for your vote. So we can make a great America greater than I actually kind of like him actually. and make of this century a new American century. Wow. He's got the <laughs> drama thing going there. That's good. He gets the award goes Senator too. Cruz. If I'm elected president, let me tell you about my first day in office. Here we go. The first oh. thing I intend to do first is to day. rescind Obama every Care. illegal and unconstitutional oh. executive action taken by Barack Obama. Ah, oh, there we go. There, yeah. Get rid of that shit right the now. The next thing I intend to do is instruct the Department of Justice to open an investigation into these videos and to prosecute Planned Parenthood for any criminal violations. 
<laughs> the next thing I intend to do is instruct the Department of Justice and the IRS to start persecuting religious liberty. I then intend to cancel the Iran deal and finally move the U.S. Embassy to Man, he's got a big Israel first day. Big first day. <laughs> big first day, word. man. My father wow. fled Cuba, and I will fight to defend liberty because my family knows what it's like to lose it. Oh. Dr. Carson, dun, 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 dun. Oh, pretty good. Well, was dramatic, I haven't too. said anything about me being the only one to do anything, so let me try that. I'm the only one to separate Siamese twins. Uh, the only <laughs> and a boy. Good for him. Yeah. I, I like him. I right. really do. The, ol the only one to operate on babies while they were still in the mother's womb. The only one to take out half of a brain, although you would think if you go to Washington that oh. someone had beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Nice. But, I, but I'm very hopeful that I'm not the only one who's willing to pick up the baton of freedom because freedom is not free there and we go. must fight for it every day. Every one of us must fight for it because we're fighting for our children and the next generation. Attaboy, Ben. There we go. All right. Yeah, yeah. Governor Mike Huckabee, closing statement. Uh oh. Here we go. <laughs> Ted Nugent. It seems like this election has been a whole lot about a person who's very high in the polls. Oh. <laughs> doesn't have a clue about how to govern. Nope. Ooh, here we a go. person who Trump is going to close last, I bet you. I hope and so. And could not lead. Big and finish. Of course, I'm talking about Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh. hey now. <laughs> that a boy, Mike. <laughs> that a boy. But you know, I think America you. is in trouble. <laughs> But it's not beyond repair, but it's going to take leadership who sees the greatness of this country and who believes that once again we can be one nation under God. I'll be my best to do that, and thank you for your support. Hmm. All right. Governor Scott Walker. Thanks. I'm a guy with a wife and two kids and a Harley. One article called me aggressively normal. I ran for governor because I was worried about my kids' future. Then I took on the big government union bosses, and we won. They tried to recall me, and we won. They target us again, and we won. We balanced the budget, cut taxes, and turned our state around with big, bold reforms. It wasn't too late for Wisconsin, and it's not too late for America. That's why I asked for your vote. Governor Bush, closing statement, sir. Mm -hmm. Here's what I believe. I believe we're at the verge of the greatest time to be alive in this world. But Washington is holding us back. How we tax, how we regulate. We're not embracing the energy revolution in our midst, a broken immigration system that has been politicized rather than turning it into an economic driver. We're not protecting and preserving our entitlement system or reforming for the next generation. All these things languish while we have politicians in Washington using these as wedge issues. Here's my commitment to you, because I did it as Florida. We can fix these things. We can grow economically and restore America's leadership in the world so that everybody has a chance to rise up. I humbly ask for your vote whenever you're going to get to vote, whenever the primary is. Thank you all very much. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Trump. A little lost there, Sanders. started improvising. Here we go. Our country is in serious trouble. We don't win anymore. We don't beat China in trade. <laughs> we don't beat Japan there with their is. millions and millions of cars coming into this country in <laughs> trade. We can't beat Mexico at the border or in trade. We can't do anything right. Our military has to be strengthened. Our vets have to be taken care of. We have to end Obamacare, and we have to make our country great again, and I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> Disappointing. Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. That's it. You relieved? You were nervous before? They're, they don't look relieved. They're like, get me out of here. <laughs> thank you all very much. And that will do it for the first Republican primary debate night of the 2016 presidential race. Our thanks to the candidates who will now be joined by their families. On oh, come on, stage. Megan, jump up on the before table and done, shake it, baby. That's what I'm wanting. Starts in a moment. I'll be I dig her. She's actually pretty smart. Brett, you know. I, I, I have to say I'm somewhat disappointed. <laughs> you know, I, you, you got to understand, these things are, what, was that two hours? It was a little over two hours. A little over two hours. They went over. And, um, you know, the way it worked was just kind of half-ass, I thought, you know. Um, yeah, it really was. I, I got to say that I thought Jeb Bush had a pretty strong uh, appearance. 
I got to say okay. that. Okay. Um, and I will say, because I, I kind of ranked them here. I put Ted Cruz at two because, and tied for, at two with Huckabee. Now, they seemed unlikely, but they made their points real well. Um, and they were very well rehearsed in the answers that they were going to give to the questions they obviously knew were coming, or uh, at least the subjects. Well-schooled politicians. Uh, yes, they are. So, yes. so that's fine. So experience counts in that, in that, in that regard. Um, gosh, I have Trump at three, and only because I thought he had a couple of he, he had a couple of good jabs. Right. Um, you know, I have to say, Chris Christie was a snooze. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, Scott Walker, who I think is a pretty impressive governor, uh, but he, he just doesn't impress uh, physically or. He's not, you know, a, he's not presidential. No, he wasn't presidential in that. He didn't give a great performance. He's not a great performer. I do like Marco Rubio. I think he's probably still in a better position in the Senate. Mm. I just think that. And he's got time. And, and he's got time. He's looked like he's about 35, and he's a pretty young guy, yeah, he's, right? I, I'm not sure of his age, but he's, <clears throat> well, he's obviously the youngest of the bunch. Um, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, And he's got a hot wife. So um, <laughs> we'll move on to Rand Paul, who I thought, you know, he had a, a couple of good moments, but uh, overall not not really impressed. You know, he stuck to his guns. He's like his dad. Those right. guys believe what they believe, and they don't right. change it. They don't. And I respect that more than I respect most of the other guys. Right. Um, but I have to tell you that I was really impressed with Ben Carson. Now, I don't think he's going to be president. And, again, not very presidential. No, 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 not at all. But it's his yeah. presentation. But, right. But he is the one, to me, who is most in touch with the wisdom of what should be going on in in our government, which mm -hmm. I think wisdom was the foundation, you know, of the whole con uh, constitutional process and all of that business. I think, you know, grace, magnanimity, transcendent government, um, and and the wisdom that I believe he has uh, be a better hold of than really any of the rest of them. Right. But um, like I say, again, he won't be president. So for Thrash Pie Radio, T Pie Digital, which, you know, my... Uh, you know, my future program, entertainment program, is, is going to run under the title of, you know, I, I thank you for your patience if you've stayed with us through the whole time, which I kind of doubt. but yeah. <laughs> I barely stayed. Yeah, me too. So, uh, But at any rate, congratulations to, uh, you know, the clown college that performed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they need to go back to school. Oof. God, you know, <laughs> yes, sir. They need to get back to drama class, yeah. drama 101. Right. Do some more exercises. Thanks so much. And for everybody here at, uh, on behalf of L.A. Radio Studio, good night.